On March 10, 2023, China, Saudi Arabia, and Iran issued a joint statement announcing that Saudi Arabia and Iran agreed to resume diplomatic relationship. Through the mediation of China, the two powerful nations in the Middle East that had no diplomatic ties for years achieved reconciliation. China and the U.S. are the two most important nations in today's world, but their approaches to maintaining world peace vary greatly. To the U.S., a divided Middle East would be easier to control and would need the U.S. more. This has led to the unwillingness and inability on the part of the U.S. to bring comprehensive peace to the Middle East. China, on the other hand, can help resolve the conflict as it has established a mutually beneficial and cooperative relationship with both countries on the basis of trust. China 我和任何一个国家都平等地发展互利中的关系 the differences in diplomatic philosophy and practice between China and the U.S. are shaped by cultural and institutional factors. From a cultural and historical perspective, peace is at the core of China's pursuit of universal harmony. Throughout its thousands of years of history, China has never engaged in colonialism, even with Xiang Hu's seven voyages to the Western Seas. Contrarily, the U.S., being the product of colonization by the Europeans, started outward expansion after its independence, following in the footsteps of the European colonizers. Statistics show that over the period of more than 240 years since the U.S. declaration of its independence on July 4, 1776, the time when the country was not at war has been less than 20 years. According to incomplete statistics, there were more than 240 armed conflicts in 153 regions worldwide from the end of World War II to 2001. Of these, 201 were started by the U.S., accounting for 81% of the total, and its excuses included implementing U.N. resolutions, providing humanitarian aid, safeguarding world peace, and protecting American lives and property. From an institutional perspective, the American democracy faces a structural problem. The capital can influence and even control the politics, as the functioning of the American democracy relies heavily on political donations. The U.S. has a powerful military-industrial complex featuring close connections and mutual dependency among the defense contractors, the Pentagon, and the politicians. This system is upheld by the three pillars – political donations, political approval of military expenditures, and lobbying in support of bureaucratic institutions. Consequently, only through external war can the three parties gain their excessive benefits. Unlike that of the U.S., China's democratic system can effectively prevent the capital's infiltration into and control over the politics, ensuring independence of its political affairs, and allowing it to make the best possible choice and take quick action in the event of a sudden crisis or a major conflict of interest. No interest group can hijack the state in China. Furthermore, China can approach international relations from the perspective of building a community with a shared future for mankind which takes into account all the common interests of all the countries in the world. President Xi Jinping stressed that on the road leading to happiness of mankind, no country or ethnic group should be left behind. History has proven that while pursuing its own development, China is committed to the human progress and the harmony of the world by always being a builder of world peace, a contributor to global development, a defender of the international order, and a provider of global public goods. All of the above, I believe, has shown clearly which country is the warmonger and which is the peacemaker.